Kaylee, I'd like to start with you on this now. Believe your own eyes. That was the prosecutor's final admonition to the jury in the Derek Chauvin trial. And John Poderitz of the New York Post writes that that should be the admonition governing the public response to this horrible tragedy. Believe your own eyes, Jen Psaki, he writes. Your thoughts? That's right. And John went on to say that she all but characterized this as an, Ill an illegitimate race-based shooting. And look, when you stand at that podium, your words carry weight. And I think that, you know, at this moment, jumping to that conclusion was incredibly irresponsible. I remember taking the podium after the horrific George Floyd video came out. Um, and we acknowledged that tragedy and said, this is tragic. This was terrible. This was hard for President Trump to watch. Uh, but then I also did this. I went on in the briefings thereafter to say, what good hard work our police officers generally do. I said, look, there are cases of injustice and we must go after those. But what about the police officer? And I went state by state, the police officer who jumped in freezing water uh, to save people. What about the police officer who saved a baby from choking in another state or one that thwarted a mass shooting? You know, this is what our police officers do every day. And you have a responsibility to acknowledge injustice when you see it. But when the facts are more complicated, like in this case where the girl was not holding a knife, but actually wielding that knife uh, to not get ahead of the facts, not portrayed in a certain way. Uh, it's this, this is the seat of our federal government, and to demonize an individual uh, before the facts are out is just deeply irresponsible. Kill me, taking Kaylee's point a step further, that officer here had nine seconds upon arriving to the scene and asking what's going on to see through a violent confrontation that culminated with a teenager lunging at another teenager and, and swinging that knife. And the argument is, who speaks for that defenseless woman, that young woman in pink there, who is alive, arguably, because this law enforcement inter officer intervened. Why can't the White House acknowledge all of the countless American lives that are saved every year by the intervention of law enforcement, rather than picking a side immediately now and making it about race? A, a couple of things, uh, all good questions. The, what I, would, I look at this and I say, wait a second, when's the last time I went to the police academy? Oops, I forgot I didn't. When's the last time someone <laughs> called me on the phone and said, I'm about to, I'm a witness, I'm about to get stabbed, come down here quick. Wait a second, it hasn't happened yet. But yet everybody, including outstanding basketball players who we'll talk about later in the show, feel as though they knew what happened, they knew the officer was wrong, and they know that uh, there's going to be hell to pay for this, including the Ohio State Students Association, who says they no longer want Columbus police on campus. And they write up in the New York Times and Washington Post, uh, they slam, they put out tweets on this and they leave out the fact that there was a weapon in the woman's hand before she was shot. How do you leave that out? And to me, this is this reeks of something saying we need an investigation to see how this happened. They pull the officer back and pending the investigation. But you got to listen to the 911 call. The 911 call, come quick. There's a guy that I'm going to get stabbed. There's a knife. So he comes quick and they're saying, why did you do that? Well, that's what he was trained to do. I've talked to more officers in the last 24 hours than maybe I did in the last 24 days, and not one of them said the guy, the officer, was wrong. So I'm curious. I'm willing to say I don't know. Why is everyone else not willing to say that, including Jen Psaki in one of the most important positions in this country? And Kennedy, Jen Psaki, joins a, a huge list of people who have, yes, jumped in and made it about race. So, for example, Valerie Jarrett tweeted here, a black teenage girl named Micaiah Bryant was killed because a police officer immediately decided to shoot her multiple times in order to break up a knife fight. Demand accountability, fight for justice, hashtag Black Lives Matter, to which there was a huge reaction to that on Twitter. Among them... Francis Joseph Beckwith, who says it's not a knife fight when one person lunges with a knife at another person who is unarmed. It's called attempted stabbing. Illustration, Lincoln was not in a gunfight with John Wilkes Booth. Kennedy, your reaction. So uh, it's, it's kind of gross and, uh, and cowardly to try and only abstract the moment that the police officer shot her because I, I look at these girls and I think about the girl who was pinned against the car uh, who was being lunged at in essentially a murderous rage. And, you know, what would have happened if that police officer hesitated? Uh, what would have happened to that girl in pink? Uh, and, you know, I'm, I look at this two ways. Number one, if that were my daughter who was pinned against the car 
and this is going to sound confusing, but I'm going to be completely honest with you. If that were my daughter, I have a 15 year old, she's almost 16, same age. If she were pinned against the car like that and someone was lunging at her with a knife with the intent to hurt her or kill her, I would want the police officer to do exactly what he did. Uh, if my daughter were Micaiah Bryant, obviously I would feel differently, but I look at Micaiah Bryant and I think, you know, teenagers right now are being abandoned and failed on every level because of the pandemic. And I look at her and obviously this girl had been failed so many times uh, by her family and by schools and by systems. You know, one can only assume. And I think that is part of the complex story that no one wants to touch on. And it's really, really important. And we have to ask ourselves, how are we failing these kids before they get to this point? Mm. Harris, Kennedy asks such good questions and illustrates that this is a she complex issue that reduces or has been reduced to this oversimplification reduced simply about race. Your thoughts? Look, you know, you ask a previous question, I'll hit that one first and then I'll come to this or maybe they tie together. Why won't Jin Psaki or the administration look at this and just call balls and strikes until we know more about the game, the whole investigation? Because they're afraid. They're cowardly in, in, in you know, the face of the woke crowd. They're not, it's not that they don't know what the answer is. The answer is we wait for the facts. Like a child knows the answer. But what is the right answer when you're, A, trying to use it to leverage it for politics, Congresswoman Waters, uh, and maybe even President Biden, because he spoke before the verdict in the Chauvin trial. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's, well, we're searching for the right answer in terms of letting this play out, but also shoring up the narrative among those people, those Democrats who want to defund the police, so we want to be part of that. I mean, politics is part of everything, and that is what is so dirty and, and so hurtful in this whole thing. You know, if, if you don't, if you can't be helpful, don't say anything, but you could be helpful by saying something like tragedy for this child's family. Imagine what they're going through. She's in foster care. That's another family that has been hurt in this tragedy as well. Um, we have to wait for the facts. And how did that 16 year old get to the point where she thought her only option was to wield a knife there are a lot of other questions. Uh, the neighbor whose garage cam that I just interviewed a few minutes ago caught this from a different perspective and had a lot of audio on it. So you really get the impact of the nine seconds as they tick down. We're done. Like that, I mean, it's quick. And that cop, so there's not, a, I've been talking to cops like Brian. So um, Brian, I'm being told that there wasn't time for a taser to, to hit this accurately, not hit the target. Mm -hmm of the car maybe or something. There just wasn't and time for a taser. And the distance was the other issue. So there are just so many more questions. And then you've got to interview this officer and see what his perspective was. It's too soon for the White House to weigh in, but they can't help themselves, apparently. Right. Kaylee, I'll give you the last final word just to talk about and, and bring us home that as all of Americans are looking to the White House for leadership during this time, and Americans are humans, which means we're not put or fit into these singular boxes, what's your last piece of advice or your statement to the White House today? Well, look, let's play out a counterfactual. If that young girl had stabbed an innocent young girl who would have died, would we have heard about this from the White House podium? No. Would Valerie Jarrett be tweeting if this was a different scenario where the innocent young girl was a victim of stabbing crime by another civilian? No, she wouldn't be tweeting. Would we hear about this as a national news story? No, because guess what? It's not the narrative that fits the left, uh, which is crime in the streets, which has soared. I, from the White House podium, talked about Sequoia Turner and Legend Talaferro and these little babies who lost their lives. And we've seen a doubling in shootings of innocent individuals um, among children in the last year. So they've got to mention the other side of this. And tragically, 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 if the innocent girl would have lost her life, this wouldn't be a story. Jen Psaki wouldn't be speaking about it from the podium. Thank you, Kaylee.